Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we will talk about pull down assays, and in pull down assays also GST pull down and Kornmuller precipitation. These are the methods to to know protein-protein interactions in cytosolic conditions. We know that in human genome, it was sequenced in 2001, and there are almost 30,000 genes which are uh, which are coding to proteins around 1.5% of the total genome that has been known and uh, these almost 30,000 genes, protein coding genes in human, they encode for almost 5 lakhs of proteins and that is because of uh, uh, alterations, modifications at uh, the level of post-transcriptional and post-translation. And uh, in a given condition in a cell, there are almost 10,000 of proteins existing and uh, these uh, these proteins in a cell that's what you call proteome also so this proteome most of the proteins in the proteome almost 80 percent they work together with some other proteins in order to perform their function and uh, those association of protein is because of protein protein interactions for example we know that in hemoglobin you have four units associating together through protein protein interactions and uh, many of the protein they form oligomeric states in order to perform their function efficiently in cytosolic environment. There are three types of pull-down assays. Pull-down assays are used to find out partners of a protein in cytosol. For example, if you know one protein and you want to see uh, this protein forms complexes with what kind of other proteins. So in order to identify those partners of the protein, uh, you can perform pull-down assays. So like we have seen earlier the TAP, tandem affinity purification technique we have discussed in earlier lecture. Then uh, affinity pull down assay, in affinity pull down assay you may use a tag, it could be GST tag, glutathione as transferase or a histidine tag where six histidine are added to the protein of interest or a maltose binding protein is added as a tag and there are many more variation of the tags are also existing. Then another method is co-immunoprecipitation where you precipitate complex form in the cytosolic condition with the help of antibody available for one of the constituent of the complex. And uh, these complex proteins, they are often uh, identified using mass spectroscopy. So in today's lecture, we'll discuss about GST pull-down assay and co-immunoprecipitation. These two uh, another very common methods used to identify complex of protein, the partner of the protein complexes in cytosol. In GST pull-down assay, you, you use a GST glutathione as transferase and that is fused with the bait protein. Bait protein is the one uh, which is of your interest for what you want to find out partners in the cytosol. And GST glutathione as transferase is an enzyme is an almost 25 kilo delta molecule weight enzyme which is involved in uh, xenobiotic metabolism. It adds glutathione uh, to foreign substances in body in order to detoxify. And uh, so GST has a strong binding affinity for glutathione. And glutathione is uh, a tripeptide composed of uh, three amino acids E, C and G. E stands for glutamic acid, C is cysteine and G is glycine. Another unique property of this peptide is that uh, the peptide bond between glutamate uh, side chain of uh, glutamate, this one, and alpha amino group of C. So this is uh, peptide bond is forming between side chain of glutamic acid, not the alpha carboxylic group, and that's called isopeptide bond. So this is isopeptide bond. It's not a uh, common peptide bond, what you call U-peptide bond, generally found in the proteins. And so this tripeptide has a high affinity for glutathione as transferase. So first what is done, GST bait construct is made, glutathione and bait, bait protein is protein of your interest. So they are gene, encoding genes for GST and bait, bait protein, those are inserted into a suitable vector and then transformed into the cell. So inside the cell, this bait and GST fusion uh, uh, protein complex is produced and the protein binding to bait, they are isolated using, using a bead which is made up of uh, agrose or sephrose linked to glutathione. 
something like this. So you can use a egg rose bead or safe rose bead to fish out the complex which is formed in the cell. And generally, if you want to remove bait from GST, a sequence is added. Peptide sequence is added between bait and GST and that's basically a thrombin cleavage site. Thrombin is a protease which cleaves this sequence. Leucine, valine, proline, arginine, glycine and serine. So it cleaves a C terminal of arginine amino acid. So eventually if you want to remove GST from the bait protein and the complex, you can use thrombin, thrombin enzyme if you have added thrombin cleavage site between GST and bait construct. So in experimentation, your GST bait uh, construct is transformed into the host cell, this one, and then the cell extract is taken. The cell extract or cell lysate is mixed with glutathione sephirose bead. So these are heavy beads uh, where sephirose is linked to the glutathione tripeptide. So in the mixture, because we know the GST bind to glutathione, so GST would bind to glutathione beads and the bait will form complexes with other cytosolic protein which you need to identify. So for example here, so when you add uh, glutathione sephirose beads into the cell extract, in the cells you already transformed GST and bait construct. So GST, the bait protein will form complex with other protein. For example, here in this example, you are having two proteins binding to bait, the purple color or they are shown by another shown by red color. So two proteins are binding to the bait and uh, this is another protein green in color. The color is shown here just for representation. Otherwise, proteins are not like that colored. So green protein is binding to the GST also. So it means uh, you are interested only in partners of the bait protein. GST binding protein also may be there in the cytosol which you are not interested into. So in order to find out whether some protein are binding to GST giving you false positive result, one has to run a control experiment also simultaneously. In the control experiment, instead of GST bait, only GST is transformed into the host cell and then it's added with glutathione sephirose beads and uh, it's centrifuged. After centrifugation, uh, you will see that if there is GST binding protein that will be retained, that will be uh, retained by GST. And when you run uh, SDS page electrophoresis, you will see a protein, you will run band 4 corresponding to GST which you have added from outside. And there is another band, this protein represent which, which has binding affinity for GST. And you will see that the, this protein would be common in your actual experiment also here. So the same band would be there in your experiment which will match with the control. So you can neglect this band because this band is because of a GST binding protein. So when in electrophoresis you will see that there will be one band would be corresponding to GST bait which molecule weight you would be already knowing because bait protein you know GST molecule weight you know. Then these two additional band in this case they represent uh, partners of the bait protein which you need to identify. Here a running control experiment is very important because in the cytosol you may be having some protein which are binding to just GST or which may be binding to your sephirose or agrose beads also. So by using control experiment you can neglect, you can remove those protein which are causing giving you false positive result. Another method to determine protein-protein interaction in pull-down assays is co-immunoprecipitation. Here the advantage is that you don't have to transform uh, the construct into the host cell. You only need antibody, uh, antibody against a partner of the complex. For example, if uh, we know that bait protein is yellow in color, it's shown by yellow here. So this is a bait protein, you want to see partner of this protein and you have antibodies against this protein available. So what you can do, you just uh, take the cell extract where this uh, protein of interest is existing and it must be forming complex with other proteins and then you add antibody which is already available with you against the protein of interest and after adding antibody you will see that this antibody would bind to this protein of your interest. So you have basically marked the complex with antibody. So antibody is binding to the co entire complex in fact because this bait protein yellow is interacting with other 
three proteins also here. Then you add a bead having protein A or protein G sephirose. Sephirose is a polymer, is a polysaccharide where protein A or protein G is immobilized. Protein A and protein G they have high affinity for FC regions of antibodies. In fact, they are used for purification of antibodies. And uh, protein A and G they are derived from Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. So when you add a bead containing protein A or protein G, the antibody portion, the FC portion of antibody would bind to protein A and it will be retained. The entire complex will be retained by the bead and when you centrifuge it, after centrifugation, because this is heavy, heavy stuff, it will settle down uh, and uh, it will be removed by, it will be washed and uh, the non specifically bound proteins can be removed and entire complex can be purified using this method. And the, and the next step, these uh, complex partners, the protein interacting with the protein of interest, they are identified. So for example, this is the entire complex which has been purified using co precipitation. It's run on electrophoresis on SDS page. All these interactions, they are broken down. They are intermolecular interactions. So all the proteins forming complex, they are separated. So you see how many proteins are there. There is one protein, number two, three, and four. And in fact, antibody is five. So antibody is also protein, immunoglobulin. So when you run that on SDS page, this entire complex is split out into five bands. Out of these five bands, you would be knowing which band correspond to antibody. For example, if this is this band is corresponding to antibody, you know it. You don't need to identify it. Then uh, the protein of your interest, yellow in color, if you know that also is good, you can neglect. For example, if this band is corresponding to the beta protein, so this also you already know, you don't need to identify. And rest of the bands, this one, two, and three, these can be identified. There are different methods like earlier we have discussed uh, the chemical sequencing method, Edmund degradation, Edmund degradation method, where this band can be cut out from the gel and it can be sent for sequencing, and terminal sequencing. So the identification can be made by uh, knowing primary structure of the protein. Or another method could be peptide mass fingerprinting PMF. That's a very common method used in proteomics to identify proteins. This we'll discuss in separate lecture. Or if a PMF is not working, you can use another method that's also very common for unknown proteins identification. This is called tandem mass spectroscopy MSMS. This method also will discuss in detail in separate lecture. So you can use either of the method in order to identify the protein forming complex with the beta protein. And that was your objective uh, to identify the protein forming the complex with the known protein, the protein of your interest. Applications of pull down assays, isolation of low microgram amount, as low as in microgram concentration if complex is present, it can be used to uh, fish out that, in, to settle it down by centrifugation and you can ident do identification and then you can perform functional studies. In fact, initial screening to identify novel protein-protein interaction is performed using some of the pull, either of the pull down assays. And you can use pull down assays even to confirm protein protein interaction, which are discovered by some other methods. And of course, you can identify protein protein complexes using this method in native conditions. Quantification is also done by this method. You also can find out the amount of protein, amount of the complex uh, available in the experiment, in the cell extract. So there are three types of pull-down assays as we know the tandem affinity purification, affinity pull-down and co precipitation. If you compare them, the uh, TAP and affinity, they will have advantage that even very low amount up to microgram amount can be, uh, can be used in the experiment, so can be identified. The disadvantage with both the method is that the tag, it is, the construct is transformed. Uh, the tag and the bait protein is transformed into the host cell and some of the protein in the host cell may have interactions with the, with the tag. So those also will be giving you false positive result. And in order to avoid that, running control experiment is very important in both these methods. Whereas in co precipitation, you do not require cloning and heterologous expression of the construct. 
the beta protein is not uh, is not required to be transformed into the host cell in order to quantify the complex is very only if antibodies are available and there's also a drawback of this method if antibodies are not available co-immunoprecipitation cannot be performed